have you been asked to calculate the present value of an amount using present value tables and you have no idea how to do it? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm Professor Capco and I'm going to show you how super easy it is to do in today's video. But first, I want to say that I believe something great is going to happen for you today. And now, back to the video. If you're someone who likes short, informative videos on how to do things in finance and accounting, give this video a thumbs up. That way the YouTube algorithm will know to feed this and to you and others that are in the same situation. Thank you. All right, today we're gonna to calculate the present value of an amount of money using present value tables such as this one. The amount we're gonna be calculating here is we're gonna find the present value of $160,000 under various terms, such as this first one, in five years at five at 8% compounded annually. In other words, what this first one is saying is that you're gonna put a certain amount of money to work today, either in a bank or in an investment, and in five years, you will receive $160,000 because it will be earning 8% compounded annually. So whatever amount you're putting in today will be at work for five years, earning 8% compounded annually. In other words, once per year. So we're gonna use our present value tables to figure out how much that amount is that you would be putting away today. And let's think about this logically for a moment. Because it's earning interest over a time period, we would expect that it's going to be an amount smaller than the $160,000. $160, the reason I mention that is because there's different types of tables that you may be using. And if you use the wrong table, it's going to give you an amount larger than $160,000. And that will be your clue that you've calculated something wrong or you use the wrong table. So we want to use the one that says a present value of $1 present value of $1. Now, obviously we're using more than a dollar. We're using $160,000, but whatever factor we come up with, we're going to multiply by 160,000. So let's do the first one and see what we come up with. So we have five years at 8% interest. So that, and since it's compounded annually, that means it's only going to be compounded five times once per year. So my period, I'm going to come down here and find five and that's right here. And then I'm going to come across until I find the 8%. That's our 8% is here. So it's like playing Battleship. I'm going to come down from the 8% and come across from the 5. And that gives me a present value factor of 0 0.681. So I'm going to write that factor down. I'm going to write it here. 0 0.681. And I'm going to take that, I'm going to multiply that by our future value, that $160,000, and that will tell us the present value. So I'm going to use my BA2 plus calculator. And yes, I'm aware that I could just use this calculator to find that present value. But in today's video, I've done that in other videos. I've linked one of those up here for you. But in today's video, we're going to actually use the present value tables because oftentimes particularly students have to use the tables. 0 0.681 is my present value factor that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna multiply that by the $160,000. And that gives me a present value of $108,960. And so that sort of makes sense. We ask ourselves, does it make sense if you put away today $108,000? $8,960 earning 8% interest compounded annually. Does it seem like in five years it would be 160,000? Now we can't really necessarily do that in our head, but that seems to that seems to be logical. And it's certainly less than that amount. So we can feel confident that we use the right table. Let's do the next calculation. This one is that same future value, the 160,000. All of these are gonna use that same future value. 
and we're going to do five years at the same 8% interest, but it's going to be compounded semi-annually. Semi-annually. So if it's compounded semi-annually, that means it's going to be compounded twice per year. There's going to be two compounding periods. And because it's compounded more often, we're actually earning more because we're earning interest upon interest. So logically, we expect that the amount that we have to put away today is going to be less than this amount. So if it's not less than that amount, we have done something wrong. So we're going to do the same table. And because it's five years compounded semi-annually, that means twice every year. That means there's going to be 10 compounding periods. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to find the period of 10. But I don't want to use the same 8% because it's not earning 8% for the half a year. It's earning half of that, so it's 4%. So I have to divide the percentage and then I have to multiply the period. So it's gonna be 10 periods because it's twice a year for five years, so that's 10. And my 8% is gonna be divided in half because it's half the year. So my factor is 0 0.0.676. I'm gonna write that down here, 0.6 seven, six. And again, I'm going to multiply that by the same 160,000. And I can see, because this is a smaller number than that, that's what I expect. I will wind up with a smaller number. So I'm going to put it into the calculator. Let me put it over here so you can see it. 0.676 times 160,000 is going to be 108, 160. So 108,000 $160. And again, what we're finding is if we were to put away $108,160 into our investment today, and it's earning a fixed rate of 8% annually, and it's compounded semi-annually for five years, at the end of five years, we would wind up with $160,000. Let's do another one. We're going to use the same future value of the $160,000, but we're going to do it for five years, same percentage, 8%, but we're going to compound it quarterly. And since we're compounding it for five years quarterly, that means five years and it's four times a year. So it's five times four. So that means there's going to be 20 periods, right? So 20 periods. So I come all the way down here and I find the 20. But again, it's the 8% is annual but it's not annual, it's four times a year. So I'm gonna take the 8% and I need to divide that by four. So that gives me 2%. So it's 2% for each quarter. So I'm gonna play Battleship again and go down 2% to the 20. And that gives me a 0 0.673, 0 0.763, 0 0.673 times and we should expect it to be a smaller number again and because it's compounded more often we're earning interest in, on interest so we expect that we don't have to put away as much to get that same 160,000 so I'm going to point the 0 0.673 times the 160,000 and let's see what we wind up with 0.673 times 160,000 my future value and that gives me 100 and $7,680. So again, it's less than the other amount because we're compounding it more times. Let's do it again. This time we're gonna do five years and we're gonna compound it annually, but we're raising the interest rate to 10%. Our interest rate is 10%. Since it's a higher interest rate, we should expect that we have to put away less money to get that 160,000, at least less than we did when it was earning only 8%. So let's see what we get. I'm gonna, we're back to compounding it annually. So we're back to only five periods. So I go to here, five, and it's 10% and it's annual. So it's once per year. So I go all the way to the end here. And I come down here and across here and I got 0 0.621, 0 0.621. And I multiply that by the 160,000. And let's see what that gives us. 
0.621 times 160,000 gives me 99,360. Let's, we've got two more of these to do. Let's change it up a little. This time we're gonna do the same five years compounded annually, but we're dropping the interest rate to only 6%. So we're not earning as much. So we should expect what? Put in your comments if you know, should the amount we put away be more or less than the amount at 8%? Yeah, you're right. It should be more because it's not earning as much interest. So we have to put away more now. We have to invest more now to get the same return. So we go to five years again. So five periods because it's compounded annually for five years and it's only going to be 8%, uh, excuse me, 6%. So I go across to the 6%. And they give me the 0 0.747. I'm going to write that down, 0 0.747. I'm going to multiply that by the same future value, the 160,000. Let's see what that gives us. 0 0.747 times 160,000 gives me $119,520. $119,520. So it did go up. So that logically makes sense. And let's do one more just to round this out to make sure you're sure of how to do these. This time we're going to put it away for fewer years. It's still going to be compounded annually and we're back to the 8% interest. So it, we're going to have to put away more because even though it's earning the 8% interest and it's compounded annually, we're only investing for three years. So we have to put away more to get the same 160,000. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my three years here, three, that's here, and I'm gonna find my 8%, that's here, it's compounded annually. I'll come down and across, play Battleship, and I get 0 0.7994, 0 0.794. And again, I multiply that by the same future value. And let's see what that gives us. 0 0.794 times 160,000 gives me $127,040. That is how you calculate the present value based upon the present value tables. So now you know how to do that, but there's so much more you're going to need to know. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you.